simplify using trigonometric identities. In the years that I've been teaching pre-calculus or the trigonometry portion of pre-calculus, I have learned that this section of the course, using the trigonometric identities, may be the toughest part of this course. And why is that? First, I would say that where we are going when we simplify is not very intuitive at times. And secondly, and this is related to item number one, it's hard to know where to go next when we don't have in hand the answer that we're working toward. To make an analogy of the real world, it can be hard to get someplace if we don't know where we're going. I think the Cheshire Cat said something like that to Alice. While simplifying using identities may be difficult and some may question the usefulness of this part of the course, I think that learning to simplify is helpful in developing and reinforcing algebra skills and consequently prepares mathematicians to perform more rigorous tasks required in further academics and in engineering, economics, medicine, and in other disciplines that use rigorous mathematics. And here is the list of identities we'll pull from to simplify these trigonometric expressions. We'll use the reciprocal identities of the six trigonometric ratios or functions, the tangent and cotangent identities, and the Pythagorean identities. And to do these simplifications, we use some basic algebra techniques, such as finding and utilizing a greatest common factor to more than one term. We will also factor by using the difference of squares method. We will also find common denominators to simplify. And my favorite technique we'll use is one that's a seventh grade skill used to divide by fractions. And that is that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that same fraction. And how do I know it's a 7th grade skill? Because I taught 7th grade summer school once several years ago, and that's what 7th graders were taught in the curriculum. Here's the first problem we'll look at. As I go through simplifying these identities, I invite the viewer to pause the lesson and attempt to simplify working ahead, and then to play ahead to, to get past where you might be stuck or to find the right answer. Use basic identities to simplify the expressions. And this first expression is tangent theta cosine theta. As a rule of thumb, I like to go to my identities to get everything in terms of sine and cosine and, and try to simplify from there. Here is a list of tangent and cotangent identities. We're going to replace the tangent of theta with sine theta or cosine theta. And this is what we have with that replacement. We now have sine theta over cosine theta times the cosine of theta. Cosine theta divided by cosine theta cancel to equal 1, and we bring down what we have left, and that's sine theta, which we box in as our correct answer. Not too difficult, just using the tangent identity and canceling by division. Now for our next problem. Again, use basic identities to simplify the expression, and it's cotangent x tangent x. And since we have the tangent and cotangent uh, together, we will again use our tangent identity, but also bring in the cotangent identity as well. We'll replace the cotangent with the cosine of x over the sine of x, and we'll replace the tangent with the sine of x over the cosine of x. And here are the cotangent x and tangent x replaced using the cotangent and tangent identities. Sine x over sine x cancel equal 1, and cosine x over cosine x also cancel equal 1. So we bring down what's left, and that's the number 1, which we box in as our correct answer. Quite a simplification there. Next problem, use basic identities to simplify the expression. And that expression is the cotangent of u times the sine of u. The basic strategy is to convert everything we can into sine and cosine, and see if we can simplify from there. So we go to our cotangent identity again, and we're going to replace the cotangent of u with the cosine of u over the sine of u. And here it is replaced. We have cosine u over sine u times sine of u. And sine u over sine u cancel to equal 1, and we bring down what's left, which is the cosine of u, which we box in as our correct answer. Next problem. Again, use basic identities to simplify the expression, and we have 1 plus tangent squared x over cosecant squared x. In this problem, we'll be using some different identities. Here are the Pythagorean identities. 
We're going to use identity in the middle because we see tangent squared theta plus 1 in the numerator and in the identity that we'll use here. So we can replace the numerator with secant squared x. And here is the expression with secant squared x substituted for 1 plus tangent squared x. Now to take care of the secant squared x and the cosecant squared x, we'll use the reciprocal identities. And here they are, our reciprocal identities. We're going to replace the secant squared x with 1 over the cosine squared x, and we'll replace the cosecant squared x with 1 over the sine squared of x. A challenge here is remembering which ratio is the reciprocal of the secant and which ratio is the reciprocal of the cosecant. What helps me remember is that the first letters of the ratio switch. S as in secant becomes C as in cosine and C as in cosecant it goes with S as in sine. And with replacement we have 1 over cosine squared x over 1 over sine squared x. We now have a division by a fraction. And division by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that same fraction. And the reciprocal of 1 over sine squared x is sine squared x over 1, or just sine squared x. So making the substitution, we now have 1 over cosine squared x times sine squared x over 1. And this simplifies to the sine squared x over the cosine squared x. And to finish this simplification, we can bring out the tangent identity, that the tangent of theta equals the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. And using the tangent identity, we get uh, the tangent squared x, which we box in as our correct answer. Here we've seen a combination of identities and algebraic operations to make this simplification possible. And we see this expression greatly simplified from where we began. Next problem. Again, use basic identities to simplify the expression. We have 1 minus cosine squared theta over the sine of theta. There are different ways we could try to do this simplification, but this cosine squared theta in the numerator lets us know that the Pythagorean identity just might work for us. And here are our versions of the Pythagorean identity. We're going to use this first identity because the cosine squared theta we want to see if we can replace. But first, we'll solve the first identity for cosine squared theta. We first subtract sine squared theta from both sides of the equation. Sine squared theta minus sine squared theta canceled equals zero on the left side of the equation. We bring down what's left, and it's cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. Next, we can use this version to replace cosine squared theta. And here is the cosine squared theta when it is replaced by 1 minus sine squared theta. We have 1 minus quantity, 1 minus sine squared theta over sine theta. 1 minus 1 canceled equals 0, and minus negative sine squared theta is the same as positive sine squared theta. So we have left over sine squared theta over sine theta. So uh, sine squared theta in the numerator can be rewritten as sine theta times sine theta which is over sine theta. Sine theta over sine theta cancel to equal 1, which equals ends up equaling sine theta, which we box in as our correct simplified answer. Now for our last problem in this video lesson. Again, use basic identities to simplify the expression. We have cosine x minus cosine cubed x. The first thing we'll look for is a greatest common factor between the two terms and cosine x is the factor common to each term. And in factored form, factoring out cosine x, we have cosine x times quantity 1 minus cosine squared x. And to simplify the 1 minus cosine squared x, we'll bring back the Pythagorean identity sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. We'll subtract cosine squared x from each side of the identity Cosine squared x minus cosine squared x canceled equals zero on the left side of the equation. We bring down what's left, and it's sine squared x equals one minus cosine squared x. Now the, the identity says theta, but I said x because the 
uh, identity or expression we're trying to simplify is in x and not in theta. And we can use sine squared theta to replace cosine squared theta. And making the replacement, we have cosine x sine squared x, which we box in as our correct answer. With this lesson, we've gone over enough problems, I hope, to get a good idea of how to start making trigonometric simplifications. At this point, I invite the viewer to go to video lessons that work out trigonometric simplifications of greater complexity. I call these videos Simplify Using Trigonometric Identities More Challenging Problems 1 and Simplify Using Trigonometric Identities More Challenging Problems 2. This has been Simplify Using Trigonometric Identities. Thanks for viewing.